Shalom. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Kakwadash, for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and his new God beside them. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit. And salutations to the elect whom the Lord hath given ears to hear. And um, today I was watching this, um, you know, I was catching up on that show Raising Canaan. Um, I'm pretty much almost finished. And um, I'm at the, pretty much the second to the last episode of the, the most previous season. And it was something that the narrator, which is uh, 50 Cent, had said in the movie. And um, I was going to play it. Nevertheless, I'll just quote it, which he said, everybody think they tough till they looking down the barrel of the gun. Everybody thinks they're tough until they look down the barrel of the gun. They start making, they start making promises to everyone. What do you say? They started, they start making promises or they start making plea deals with everyone, including God. And, um, you know, it got me to thinking of how when shit hits the fan, as even our pops and elders, they, they brought it out. When shit hits the fan, you're going to see who's really been practicing what they preach, who really believes in what they're preaching. Lucky. you. Now the elect, they're not gonna have no problem. Alright? This word, this word is this, this word is them. Alright? As Yahweh Shai is a part of them already. So in the last days, like the scriptures say, there shall no torment touch them. Now, we already know that some of the elect shall be beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. So what does that scripture mean by no there shall no torment touch them? Meaning they shall not lose. Their faith in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. They're not going to be pleading to get out of that situation. Alright? They're not going to be pleading to man to get out of that situation. Right? As a matter of fact, let me grab this. It just came to mind. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 29. And you know, 50 Cent, he's a good narrator. Especially in... um. I believe he was actually the executive producer, if not mistaken, of that show. Because he growing up, you know, he been through a lot of situations. You know, everybody know about, you know, him getting shot and all of that. And um I'm pretty sure. Well, I bring that out to say that he has the perfect understanding as far as, you know, life and death scenarios. You know? But how much more, you know, well, I say that, I'll just leave it at that. You know, he has a perfect understanding of life and death scenarios, right? So, you know, he, like, as the scriptures say, use the world, not abusing it. And we marrying it to a spiritual point of how we going into these last days. You know, especially us men, we don't know our plight, but we do know this. We know what Yahweh Shai told us. He said, all that will live uh, godly shall suffer persecution. So whatever it may be, it's going to, that hour of temptation is likened unto you staring, staring down the barrel of a gun. Right? Now, will you plead for your life or will you lay it down as Yahweh Shai did? Right? But this is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 26. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from Yahweh. That's a fact. Every man's judgment cometh from Yahweh. Right? The scriptures speak about how when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with them. With him. Right? So... In these trying situations where our faith will be uh, 
shake it as Yahweh Shai's faith was, you know. And, you know, again, going into um the quote that 50 has said in the end of that show, it kind of reminds me of Yahweh Shai being in the flesh. You know, he's kind of pleading. He, well, he was pleading. He wasn't kind of. He was actually pleading with the Lord. All right. Because when you understand the nature of this flesh, you must understand that it was a commandment that the Lord gave to man to be fruitful and multiply. Right. So as a man in the flesh. You know, death is. Um. Death is naturally a scary thing. You know? As we are put on this earth to live. Right? So, this devil understanding that, you know, um, is going to threaten us with that, you know, in all, in, in, in various ways. I'll just say that. Whether it be through torture, all right, through beheading. Or oh, even if you may not necessarily be tortured, you may try to attempt to torture your family. Is it not written in Romans 15? All right, that the things that are written aforetime were written for our learning. And it tells us what in Hebrews 11, right, that um, some men were tortured for the witness of Yahweh Shah. Right? But this is a beautiful chapter because it speaks about how other men were saved. From the torture So it's not all You know it's not all bad Nevertheless like they say Prepare for the worst Hope for the best Right So In In that under, You know Or in that So called mantra As they say Or in that saying Let's Get to verse 36 And others had trials Of cruel mockings And scourgings yeah, moreover, a bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tented, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. But wait, again, I quote the scripture where it speaks about um, no torment. Right, wisdom of Solomon three and one, right? So we just said, and as we just read in Hebrews eleven thirty seven, it speaks about how some of the elect were tormented, but here we read, the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. All right, so is there unrighteousness with the heavenly Father? Is there a contradiction in the scriptures? I think not. This is speaking of how, like when you go into the book of what Acts sixteen. When Paul and Silas were singing, all right, in their hour of temptation, or when you go into the songs of the three holy children, how they were dancing in the fire, praising the Lord, meaning they weren't affected, all right, by the physical by their physical circumstance. They stayed true to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. See, as a man in the flesh, you will succumb to, you know, pleading your case to the Lord. You know, and that's what people don't understand. Judgment Day, you know, it's called Judgment Day for a reason. Right. Let me grab this and then we're going to come back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3. But I want to jump over to Matthew chapter 16 or Matthew chapter 16. Verse 24. Then say Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sakes shall find it. Right? So it's a lot being said just in that one verse. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. 
Now, you know, if you get down on your knees and you plead to, you know, whatever, uh, you plead to uh, whatever elite devil or whatever devil is going to attempt to constrain you to take the RFID chip, guess what? You lose your life. All right? You lose. You you lose. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way to put it. You lose. All right? Because it's, for one, like it says in Psalms 50, was that Psalms 50 and 22? He set forth his hand up against all that be at peace with him. He had broken the covenant. So this you can't, you know, here it is. You take this RFID chip and this devil, uh, you know, promises you a better life, promises you food. But we know he don't keep his end of the bargain. Plus, most importantly, you lose with the Heavenly Father. Does it not tell us in Revelation 14 and 9 that whoever taketh or receiveth that M-A-R-K, all right, Shall be the you know uh, sent uh, to the lake that burning with fire and brimstone. So you lose. All right, you're a loser. It's pretty much what the Lord is saying here. For whosoever will save his life, all right, whosoever will plead, all right, whosoever uh, will succumb to the you know to the trickeries of the devil. You will you will lose. I really wish I could play that you know part for y'all brothers, man. But we already know how YouTube is. That part that I was uh. But I say if you watch you know brothers that watch that show, go to season I want to is season three episode nine, around like the fifty minute mark, maybe forty nine. 49 minutes and 50 seconds around that area. We're um pretty much in the show. Um, one of the brothers, you know, he was pretty much running his mouth because he started to feel guilty about what he has done. Right? And the scenario was he he thought how can I say it? The scenario was he thought that by him, you know, running his mouth and going against the family, this is wicked shit. Nevertheless, like I said, it led to a, a good ass uh, quote by um, 50 Cent. But he thought by running his mouth and all of that, he can uh, relieve himself of his uh, of his guilt. Nevertheless, you know, uh, that pretty much. Wrote his ticket, all right. <laughs> that pretty much wrote his ticket, which meaning his own family was gonna off him, all right. But at that point, you know, he was he was pleading for his life, but it's like you know, pretty much the tone was set to where we can't trust you, we got to take you out, right? So he was pleading, you know, what I'm saying you gonna kill your own brother, da 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 da, and um, you know, Fifty was saying. That's that's what led to that quote, all right. So um, like I said, I, you know, I found it pretty pretty interesting. But going into that word lose, he shall lose it. It says to destroy, to put out of the way, entire abolish, put an end to ruin. Damn. So you sever all. You sever all points of mercy from your how why your how shy. All right, if you shall lose your life, if you, if you, I'm sorry, for whosoever will save his life will lose it. So if you attempt to save your own life, thinking in the flesh, you will actually lose your life. You will actually destroy or ruin your life. And whosoever will lose his life. For my sakes shall find it. Right? Then now Yahweh shall tell the woman at the well that those that drink of this water should never thirst again. So at the point of being faced with death, and the the man of the Lord has already played out that scenario by reading the acts of his forefathers, by reading the scriptures. 
he has already fully considered in his mind, you know, what is to come. And like the, our apostles and elders, you know, shalom to them over here, Great Millstone, they teach us to put our minds into the scriptures, not just to read it, you know, like a, um, like a, a, a nonfiction, you know, some form of entertainment, but to read it, believing that that could have possibly been you. You know, you're reading about your former acts, you know. And it's easier said than done, nevertheless, understanding that all these words are true, we understand that it must be done. All right. We will face that crossroads one day. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Right? Now, the book of Tobit speaks on how the angels, all right, which you have one of the angels, Raphael, all right, was speaking on how pretty much he saw what Tobit did in his whole life. And therefore, the Lord sent him to bless Tobit. All right? And pretty much what I'm getting at is that the Lord is always watching. The book of Proverbs 15 and 3 clearly says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. All right. So here it is on judgment day. All right. You got the witnesses. All right. You got the judge. You got the jury. All of that. All right either on your side or against you for the son of man shall judge shall come in the glory of his father right Yahweh Shai is going to come in the judgment right and the opinion whether good or bad concerning someone mm. right so Yahweh Shai is going to come in the ma majesty the dignity the grace Right? Yahweh Shai is going to come in the steed of his father. Is not is it not written that all judgment was given to the son? Now we know they're not the same. Alright. Let the scriptures say uh when Steph when you go to Acts the seventh chapter and various precepts, speaking on how Yahweh Shai sits on the right hand side of Yahweh. Alright, but I digress back to my point. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works all right so the lord is going to reward every man according to his works verily i say unto you there be some standing here which shall not taste of death all right but as um the beloved brother ashar you find out the scripture, um, was that Isaiah? Was that fifty nine? There be no weapon formed, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Right, but that that doesn't mean it's not gonna be formed. You know, that's not that that doesn't mean that you won't be uh, it won't come to your face. It just means that it won't uh be able to penetrate. It won't be able to. Performance enterprise is intended purpose for you. All right. It says, We shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now let's jump back to Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of God, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. And their departure is taken for misery. And their going from us is to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. Right? And why are they in peace? Alright? Because they already considered. They already. Uh, the scriptures say. In your patience possessing your souls. They already considered. And understood. And are in agreement. Alright? With the judgment that comes from following the Lord. 
So there's no pleading. What the fuck are you pleading for? For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And again, this is why we must keep reading the scriptures. We must read and pray. Read, pray, and fast. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. They shall understand the purpose of his life. All right. And they, they shall understand how to answer. Right. As it is written. Uh, what's that scripture, man? Um, well, it's a couple of scriptures I'm thinking of. Pretty much going into how Yahweh Shah is going to give his elect a mouth to where his adversaries cannot gain say no resist or it tells us in other words in the old testament that he will make a way for us to escape isaiah 59 and 19 if you were wondering and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is to his saints and he have care for his elect but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations all right, their own fearful mind, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. So if that, shalom to the elect.